So what is fly fishing? Um, what is fly fishing? Uh, what is fly fishing? It's kind of old men just throwing a rod. Fly fishing is using a highly flexible rod. It's kind of a more of a holistic lifestyle than anything else, but I mean, it's just a really fun way to catch fish. Like you can get as much into it as you want, or you can come and do it for fun. Like I just tend to do it a lot, probably too much. <laughs> So day one, Mickey's taken us to a little creek system in the mountains and it's quite narrow. I'm actually really surprised that there's any fish in here at all, but he assures me that there is. So basically down here, guys, we've got sections where these fish are going to run up this main river and then they're going to stop for a bit of a break and we've got early morning light, we've kind of snuck in, we're gonna go down in there and actually see if we can spot them. So we're gonna go nice and slowly, kind of commando style, sneak up on them, get behind them, and then we're gonna take turns just taking shots and you know, we'll load up like those little bow and arrow casts, little sight fishing casts, it's gonna be fun. Like, ideally we will find a stonker. Why fly fishing? I think, I think fly fishing because Mickey, because I've met Mickey. This guy's a bit crazy and a bit tweaked. He's entertaining. He's a good singer. He has a passion for fly fishing and fish in general that is so contagious. He's a professional. He gets so much pleasure out of teaching you and he's an incredible teacher. So if you listen to what he has to say to you, then the results start coming your way. This is called sight fishing, and this is the process where we are physically searching for where we can see the fish, and then we're targeting a fly to present right on top of them. So we need to be really accurate with our casting, we need to be very smooth and fluent with our movement so the fish don't get spooked. And we just basically need to do as Mickey tells us. One yeah. here. Over there, I can see yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right on the edge, it's just moving over. Yeah. Come up just here, right on the edge. Okay, we're gonna get a little further over. <laughs> this is Mickey's river booty workout. <laughs> I'm surprised more women aren't into this. So up in here is like big wild territory. We've been stalking in and trying to find these guys. And then Mickey's like, shh, you know, get out and don't move. That's when you walk past a mega donkey down. Oh, yeah. Just as I said it too. I've actually really enjoyed having someone boss me around a little bit. Like Mickey's, Mickey's really serving it up to me and telling me exactly what I need to do. It doesn't normally happen too much. And I think it's been really good for me. Just that again and again. And those back casts, man, none of this soft lip nonsense. Reef it back in the air and then lay it down. That's it, lead it, lead it, lead it, lead it. Cast again, firm back cast, good. Much better, man. Bounce it out of there, yeah, back in there. Nice, lead it, lead it, lead it. Go again. Fuck. Yep, stay on him, stay on him. Keep your rod up. <sighs> rod up. Bang! Pull down, pull down, pull down, pull down, pull down. Keep low, we'll get the other one. Two of them in there. Bullshit! Oh my there we go. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> go, Harvey. The support is in the for two rocks. <laughs> if, you, if you want to go, she'll take that down straight there. She'll be happy. Right? We've spotted a really nice fish. It's Joe's turn. Three of them. Come right here. And then go for it. Nice, oh, let it drift. Oh, the money. A bit more to the right next time, Joe. They've just shifted over a touch. Yep, go for it, mate. Perfect, let that drift. Whack him. Yep, you got him. Oh. Keep his head up. <laughs> Keep his head up. That's it. Keep your rod oh up, Joe. My God. Don't hold the line. Got him! Yes! Oh, yes! yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is a donkey! <laughs> <laughs> Dude! <laughs> That's nuts! <laughs> oh my god! That's it. It's a big jack, man. Dude, look at it. Big, 
pink floor. That's what we used to fight each other this time here. We call that a kite. Spot on five. That is a 2.5 kilo brown trout. Can't believe that's your first fish on flight. That's the coolest thing ever. <laughs> that's my <gnarly. laughs> I spend the whole life checking fish like that. George just gets out. Yeah, I got it. That's that is. It. Congratulations. I am so happy for you, Ray. Hugs all around. Joe has absolutely shown me up from day dot to catching the largest fish of the day. Welcome to your new hobby. Uh, <laughs> you ruined if, my life. If that doesn't uh, get you hooked on it, I don't know what will. Joe is one of the most lovely people that you can ever meet. She is a phenomenal cook. The other side to Joe is that she's this incredible outdoors woman who loves to free dive and spearfish and hike. She's got a lot of grit and she doesn't mind being out in the elements. She's hard as nails, but she also is really excited about getting involved with, with fly fishing. I think to say that she's into it now is a pretty serious understatement. Joe's got a really good fish and it's really put into perspective that this little creek is holding some giants and I really want to catch one, so we're going to make our way up to the end pool. Hit him! Yep, pull him out. Cool. You got him. Stay on him. Okay. Yep, bring him back. Bring him back. Let him run. We're really excited about the day that we've just had. It's an experience that we've never had before and we're pretty psyched to see how this, as an ingredient, as chefs, how we can start to play with this. So today we did a spot of fly fishing with our friend Mickey Finn. This is a male brown trout. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a little bit of a chowder. Yeah, that sounds good. Cool. We've decided to butterfly the fish and take all the bones out of it. And there was this really lovely marinade that Joe had brought with her, which was like some fennel and ginger and garlic, and a little bit of green chili. So we smeared that all over the fish. And then we took those bones and we sort of smoked those slightly in the fire. We found an old rusty um, fish cooker here down by the fire. So that's gonna come in perfect. And then I'll rub both these sides with a bit of oil and I'll cook this over the fire. It's a giant fish. It's a, like, <laughs> there's no need to rub it in, Joe. So what do you love about fly fishing? I just find, I find there's a real art form attached to it. Like, and I'm, and I'm quite shit at it. So like today we're sneaking into tiny little creeks. We're spot fishing trout. It reminds me of hunting. Yeah, I'm that's, really... That's what I think I'm, I'm drawn to the most. Yeah. Creeping by the riverbank, trying not to make too much vibration. You know, like, it's cool. <laughs> to catch a... And we go to all this effort to catch a fish. You know, I just... I don't know. I think there's so much in the craft. Yeah. We're making a, a saffron based chowder and then we're going to thicken that with caramelised onions and roux. Then we're going to flake that fish over the top of our chowder and then we're just going to garnish that with a little bit more of Joe's secret sauce. Joe, what's in your secret spice mix? So in that one there's some shallot, chilli, coriander seeds, fennel, vinegar and a bit of saffron. It's, like um, it is quite literally amazing. And then you've got sauteed um, echelot, ginger, chili yeah. in the other mix. Right, have a look at what that's turned out like. It's gonna be fucking awesome. Yeah, it looks great. Just gonna throw a little bit of vinegar over this fish. A bit more salt and pepper. We're gonna make a cream fresh with some dried dill and thyme and Joe has brought with her some finger lime, so we punched some little finger lime pearls into that, so it's really citrusy and poppy. 
And then we're going to spoon some of that heavy cream into the top of our chowder. Oh wow, that is a explosion of flavour. Your chilli mix has got heaps of go-go about it. Mm. The saffron, like the roux works so well. Far out, that's awesome. Fuck, it's, it's legitimately <laughs> fucking yeah. good. Holy shit. Yeah. Dude. The yeah, finger lime is like nerds, but delicious. <laughs> if day one is anything yum. to go by with this yum, trip, yum. this is going to be quite a successful trip. We've fished a small little stream, we've sight fished, we've had beautiful conditions, we've had an incredible meal together. It's been so nice to spend some time with Joe. Let's see what tomorrow brings. So how do you fly fish? Uh, you fly fish by having a fly line and a little fly on the end. How do you fly fish? How do I fly fish? B badly. And an indicator or a float. Actually, Mickey's going to kill me if I say float. An indicator. Realistically, if you're throwing a fly at a fish, you're fly fishing. It's an early start. It's actually turned out to be a bit of a shit of a day. It's freezing cold up here. We're at about 1,200 metres of altitude. It's howling wind. It's in the minus, I think it's probably minus four or minus five or something when we got down there. We've decided to rug up as best as we can. We're fishing a bigger river. It's much more exposed, so it's gonna be much harder to fish than what we were doing the day before. So Joe, this is pretty down and dirty today. We've got really high, dirty water in the river. So the fish will be traveling through. That's it, good. Remember to follow through on the next one. Fish are going to be traveling through, but they'll be right on the bottom as they're traveling because you know how we were wading before, you really feel the pressure of the wading up against your thighs? Yeah. But you don't feel it so much on your feet because that bottom water is really turbulent. It's actually quite slow for them. So they move through the bottom, hugging it really tight. So we've got to get down to them. So we fish really short lines with a fair bit of weight and we high stick, keeping our rods up, keeping them nice and high. So it's short casts bomb them through, keep it down on the bottom, and then we have these indicators ticking along. We know we're just touching bottom, we're down there with the fish, and we're just keeping an eye on them. If they shoot down, bang, you're gonna follow through with that big strike and we'll whack them. And we're not scaring them like, by being this close? No, we can get right up on top of them. The good thing about the dirty water is that they'll travel through it quite happily and they also can't see us very well. It does make it tough we need to put a fly right on their nose for them to see it, but if they see it, they'll be happy to eat it. But one of the advantages is we can be right on top of them and they don't care. I was saying to Mark, I love the ethos behind fly fishing. It's not necessarily just taking. Yeah. It's actually respecting what's in the water and yeah, respecting what's around and really reading nature. And yeah. I think lots of people do want to get out in nature and do stuff. That's it. Not necessarily just hike, kind of have a purpose. Yeah. But this is a really nice way to do it without feeling like you're having a massive impact. Yeah. Well, it's a cool thing. It's, it's, it's got all the best aspects of hunting, but at the end of the day, you've got the choice to release a fish and, you know, let it go back home and just keep living the good life sort of things. The update is cold, windy, hot coffee, amazing hot coffee, a Mars bar, that was cool. No trap. We're putting the hours in. It's fucking windy and it's fucking cold. I started having some thoughts, you know, did Mickey have a pretty good day on the first day? Did he get a bit lucky? You know, we've had a bit of a bum steer in our morning fish, but true to his word, he's put us under the fish and things start getting pretty serious in the second spot. We got no fish left, so we need fish. We don't want to get greedy. Just a couple of fish, so we can have a little cook up. Oh, that looks like a nice fish. Oh! Oh! That was a fish. I didn't hook it properly. 
Come on. Yep, coming in hot. Six. Nice. You're my boy, LeBroy. Good fish. So you're taking your time. Okay, work him up. Oh! oh Holy yeah, crap! Dude, me. that is a monster of a fish. Oh Look at that. He's eating the, the egg and the nymph. He ate them both. <laughs> yes! Little one. A little kiss. Mwah. Turn it home. See you, baby girl. Cool. Keep whacking it, man. There'll be more in there. It's been pretty rad just watching these guys clean up. Is fly fishing boring? Uh, no, I don't think it ever is. <laughs> I could see how people from the outside, if you hadn't tried it before, could find it a bit boring. It's just standing in cold water and casting, but you're actually looking out to nature and yeah, there's so many aspects to take in and I love it. <laughs> it's kind of the perfect thing to do if you find other types of fishing boring or if you just find life boring then fly fishing really pushes you into these new situations and places and just gets you to challenge yourself and really progress. I think it's probably the most engaging thing you can do. Who is fly fishing for? I think fly fishing is for everybody, but not for those that are impatient. I mean, fly fishing is for everyone. If you can do that, then you can fly fish. Even if you can't do that, we can build stuff and make things happen. So, you know, we can get it done. We've had some hard fishing. We've had a great day at it. We've got a couple of fish in the cooler. We're very excited about what we're gonna do, but I think that uh, it's time to have a bit of a coffee and, and hatch a bit of a plan about how we're gonna tackle this. I'm hungry. I'm actually starving. <laughs> I, can't I can't keep living on Smart's bar. I am um, building something. It's gonna be really fun. I like building stuff. Mm. And utilizing what we have here, yeah. like all those river stones. And all we need to do is that. That's unreal. Cool, eh? Yeah. This is going to be a really fun cook. I think this will be a fun cook. I think there's going to be some challenges. Like there's some weather coming in. It's overcast. It's exposed. Like we're not, we're not cooking lobsters on a beach. <laughs> it's just never going to come across how cold it actually is out here. We're feeling pretty good about things. Uh, we've, we've hatched a bit of a plan about what we're going to do. We've come up with this idea of trying to use the fireplace to push a little bit of warmth into our stone wall where we then make an arching sort of smoking tunnel. And then we've thatched these sticks together and tied it together with the, with the snow grass. And then we've wet some little bushels and we've woven that into the top of the of the cross hatching of the timbers and then within our wall we've built in a smoking rack that we're using some young branches that i skinned all the bark off them and soaked them in the river so they wouldn't catch on fire and then we've got a nice little bed of coals it's starting to get nice and warm in there and we're just going to throw the mountain pepper into that bed of coals to bring a bit of a smoky element to it. Oh my God, this fish is in incredible condition. I'm just going to cut the spine out. And then Joe has made a fennel and sugar salt curing solution. That's going to be phenomenal. I'm really, I'm really excited about that. So we just got our fish. Wow. Oh, you can smell that already. That's cool. I'm really stoked with that. Now we just let smoke do its thing. Yeah, let's get some other pots. 
together maybe. Yeah. To make a rosti. I'll make a rosti. You're gonna do. Make some like a crispy a crumb. Is, yeah. For this other fillet. So, how do you make your rosti? Um, I just I partially I three quarter boil potatoes, and then I grate them while they're still warm. Then I fold in a bit of salt and pepper, and then I form up. Alrighty, while the fish is smoking, it's going to take about 25-30 minutes and we're going to make a crumb for our fillet of trout. So I've just heated up the skillet and I've got some sesame seeds and we're just going to toast them. This is a little bit of uh, the three blue ducks duka spice mix. Right. Chuck that in our bowl. We are going to make what we call in the biz pan gratata, which is just crispy buttery bread. Take a knob of butter, quite generous. I'm your assistant. Bread now. <laughs> the butter will just melt. The butter fat soaks into the bread and then the oils left over will make it nice and crispy. Salt bay. Terrible restaurant we've started up here. Wait, this could be a thing. This could be a thing. Oh my god, gum. Now I'm going to make a roshti. Get a nice hot pan. I've got a little bit of oil in there. And then I'm going to throw in some butter. Uh, a river, a lake, a pond of butter. Well, like I want foaming butter. So here's my formed up roshti. That looks unreal. I love the idea of par cooking the potatoes a bit. The other style that we want to do is just take a big piece of the top side fillet of the jack and we don't even scale this or anything. We just gonna sear this off in a burnt butter, get a nice crispy skin on it, throw in our capers and a little bit of white wine and a few herbs, flip it over for 30 seconds and that's it. It's super simple. I really love this style of cooking of just using the raw ingredients, you know, like we've caught these fish, it's been an amazing experience, we're out in nature, and then we're just cooking with fire, it's so rudimentary. We're trying to cook with an open flame, but we're also trying to cook with a smouldering flame where we can get some different characteristics introduced into our fish. So it's quite challenging, you know, like we've both been cooking for long enough now, why don't we try and use something that's a little bit more organic and a little bit more raw and a little bit less predictable and see if we can get a result that we're happy with. Well, I mean, I feel poultry, but I managed to wander across the alpine wilderness and find some cold ones. So. <laughs> <laughs> No. About all I can offer is fish knowledge and beers. But. Well, yeah, well, fish and beer, that's like, come on. Cheers, guys. Mate, epic trip. Yeah, thanks Hello. for having me. So it's been so much fun. And thanks, Marky, for inviting oh, me. Come on, any time. I'm just going to go with my fingers, because I'm a bush man. Oh my god. Mm. Yum. So nice just smashing proper wild fish that eat nothing but crustaceans and other fish all day. It just doesn't taste muddy. Mm. No. At all. Because they're feeding in the lakes and they just eat nothing but all those yabbies and a bunch of freshwater shrimp and things like that. That's why lake fish are always the best. Here's round two. Wow. Cook in? Yeah, let's do it. That's the best smoked fish I've ever had. Really? Yeah. On, in this style, absolutely. That Hot is... smoke, yeah. Just the, like the cure on it as well. Yum, it's so yum. Ma'am, thanks so much for coming out guys. And I like to as well, like we're finishing up, having to eat, having to feed. And um, you've got all the leftovers going there, just make a soup later. Like it's so good to bring it all around and just cap everything off and not waste anything. Like you can take one, use everything. Yeah, you can. Exactly. Everything. Just knocking the fillets off, I think, doesn't really do it justice. Mm. That is this, the back end smokiness is the best. But even in the potato, I think. Yeah. Um, it's still daylight. Yeah. 
So we're gonna go catch them. Do they look like they're fishing you? Yeah? <laughs> oh, well, that's what, what do you think I've been doing while you guys have been cooking? I've got one job. Go find fish. I've done it. Well, let's go fishing. I'm keen. I'll, I'll give it another crack. Let's go see if we can get one more Hog Johnson. Let's get a let's get a Hog Johnson. I want to ride a Hog Johnson. <laughs> Just ride it off into the sunset. Ooh, sick. Let's do it.